Good morning, everybody. Today on the Art of Online Marketing, I'm going to be talking about planning for success. Plus, stick around till the end to learn how you could get nominated for a social media business award. So, my name is Denise Allison, and I am the owner of Stratigro, and I work with business owners to empower them to use social media to connect with their audience and build relationships with potential customers. So I just arrived from Toronto, spent the weekend at a conference. Well, conference makes it sound boring. It's, it was really a, a three-day event where we talked about getting really clear on our message and getting clear on what it is we want to bring to the world as, as business owners. So during those three days, I had lots and lots and lots of information come into my head um, from, from the sessions we did. And I also had lots of opportunities where things became really clear to me. So I want to share some of those things with you today. So let me know if you're watching, let me know who you are and let me know where you're watching from uh, in the comment box below. And feel free to share this video if you want your, your friends to benefit from this knowledge as well. All right, so a few takeaways from, from my weekend away. So this was an event, it's called Your Million Dollar Message and it was hosted by Eleanor Beaton, and she's a, she's a very successful uh, a business lady from Windsor, Nova Scotia. And so this event had about 65 women business owners and a few people um, in corporate, but 65 really strong women who had some, a lot of ambition and some really, really big goals for themselves. And we all came together over three days and we chatted, we met one another, and, and we, we all also learned from, from the curriculum. So the first takeaway I had became really clear right away. And that is uh, that you really need to surround yourself with like-minded people when you are an ambitious person. Because I know I've probably mentioned this before, and if you already know the story, bear with me. But I live in Clare, Nova Scotia, which is incredibly rural and and the economy is based on fishing and there's lots of fishermen fishing related activities and lots of teachers and that kind of thing there aren't a ton of ambitious female entrepreneurs which makes it a little bit challenging because as much as my friends support me support what i do and want me to accomplish my goals they they don't truly understand what it's like to try to to grow a business and to be in that mindset of trying to accomplish things and and what it takes to really make those things happen and sometimes i'll be talking to acquaintances and they'll be like oh come out come out for a drink with us and it's like tuesday tuesday night or something say oh i can't i need to work and they'll say something like yeah, but you work for yourself, which for me is a really odd thing to say because I do work for myself, but I do have a lot of things to get done and I have a lot of projects on my plate and I need to answer to my clients. So I need to get things done for them. So it's not like, oh, I work for myself. I can do whatever I want all the time. Well, I can to a certain extent, but there are still a lot of things to get done. And I would argue sometimes there are more things that I have on my plate than somebody that's working for someone else. And then once I get all those things done, there are other things that I want to spend my time doing to uh, get further along with my goals. So it's really great. It was really great to be around a room full of women who are living it. They know and understand my situation fully because they are living it now or they've been through it. So that was amazing. And they also know how how to support you. They know what things to say to help you feel better and what things definitely not to say. And, and they're also people that you can bounce ideas off of. So I could come up with tons of ideas and try to discuss them with my my friends and people in my community, but they won't ever be able to give me the type of feedback that I need. And I'm not saying this is everybody, but in general terms, that, that's what's up. And it also gives you someone to talk to when things get, get challenging. So same thing that they know how to support you. They, they just, they know because they've been there and they know how to help you move forward in the best way. 
And then another benefit of having a, a strong network of business owners and people who have been where you are and are as ambitious as you is you can also tap into their network so they might know the perfect person for you to talk to. I mean, that's a side benefit, but that's always great too, right? All right, so lesson number two for planning for success that became really clear to me at this great event was scheduling the time to, to plan your business. So I talked about this last week, the difference between working in your business and working on your business. So working in your business basically means you are taking care of the day-to-day, -day, you're working on client projects, you're answering email, you're getting all those things done that, that need to get done to, to make your clients and your customers happy. And working on the business is looking at that bigger picture and, and bringing in the client so that you have something to, to work on. So it's getting yourself out there, marketing yourself, and doing all those things that you need to sustain your business, to plant seeds for the future. So it's really important to give yourself some time to think of that big picture. And I don't, I mean giving yourself some time to just think about it, hash it out, brainstorm it. Because if you're working on things all the time, you don't have that creative space and that freedom to plan for what's next. So you want to know what your goals are. You want to know what's next in your business, what you want to accomplish in the next year or the next six months and what steps you're going to take to get there. And those things can't surface if you are doing busy work all the time. So you really need to give yourself dedicated time to, to plan for your business and plan what you want to do next. So this weekend was great because I had three days to work on my business and things that I didn't even know were there easily came out of my mind once I gave myself the opportunity to sit down and, and focus on what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. So things don't happen without a plan. I, I think you probably know that if you don't plan for it, it's not going to happen. Just wishing that your goals are going to happen. Uh, I mean, that that's not really going to work for you um, unless, you know, uh, Jiminy Cricket or whoever the genie comes down and grants those for you, which doesn't really seem likely. And working harder doesn't necessarily get us there because like I said, if you're just working in your business all the time, working harder and getting better results for your customers, I mean, that is great, but it's not automatically going to translate into more customers or more revenues or, or growing your business. So working harder won't necessarily get us there. We need to work on the business and, and grow the bigger picture. And doing the same old things won't get us there. So you really need to step it up. Your business has probably plateaued because you need to step it up and start, start making things happen so that you can achieve those goals. All right, so number three of planning for success is being really clear on what you do and who you work with. So during this event, I met the majority of the people attending attending the conference. And like, and they'd say, I'm so-and-so, and I do this, and I work with these kind of people. And I was like, oh, wow, that sounds really interesting. Because to me, it's always interesting to know what people are doing and how they arrived at where they're at. So I love hearing those stories from other people. But then others, I would ask what they do, and they'd be incredibly vague and they say, I'm a coach, um, I coach, I'm a life coach and I'm a business coach and I'm a consultant. So yes, there were some that were incredibly vague and they'd say, I'm a life coach, I'm a business coach and I do all of these things. And I think my reaction was always something like this. It's like being, oh, okay, so what, who do you work with? And they really couldn't answer it and so, it was a great opportunity to network with people and the fact that they couldn't be really clear on who it is they're working with and what types of things they're doing, they missed out on that amazing opportunity for, for connecting with people. So it's really important to be really clear about that for many reasons, because if you can be incredibly clear when you're talking to somebody, they might see that you are the best person to help 
that you are the best person to help them with the problem they are facing. So if when somebody asks you what you do, are, are you clear right away? Um, I want you to think about that. Does the person get it when you explain what you do and who you do it for? If not, you might need to reassess things. So the issue might be that one, you are just not, you're not putting it into words properly what you do. So you might need to just do some rejigging there. But a lot of the times is that your business is just not focused enough and you can't seem to put into a 30 to 60 second uh, elevator pitch what you do. If you can't do that, it means you're probably being way too vague and way too broad. So it's probably in your interest to be a lot more specific in who you who you are working with and what you do for them and niche down as much as possible if it takes 10 minutes to explain all the facets of your business you are probably being way too broad and you really just need to niche down so that your message becomes clear and can resonate with your ideal customers so that they know that you are the perfect person for them all right so those are the three the three things that became really clear to me uh, for planning for success. So one, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Two, scheduling time to plan your business. And three, being really clear about what you do and, and who you work with. So those are were my three insights from the weekend. My three my three takeaways. I, I'm sure there are plenty more. I just need time to to digest all of the information. All right, so now on to something really excited. I'm really excited to share this all with you. So, so Social Media Business Awards 2017. Yep, so Stratigro is putting on the 2017 Social Media Business Awards. And so if you have a business that's on social media and you want to get nominated, here's how. So you can head over to my website and that's stratigra.ca and you'll see on the menu at the top there, it'll say social media business awards, uh, but of course it's slash social dash media dash awards if you really want to get there quickly. But if you just go to stratigra.ca, it should be obvious how to get there. So the nominations are open as of now and they close on November 28th at, at midnight and that's midnight wherever you are. Um, I'm gonna be sleeping so as long as they're there when I wake up in the morning it, it's gonna count. All right so here are the ca categories. There are four four fun categories and then one one big category. So the categories are noob of the year and and this is a new business or somebody that has just started their online presence in 2017 and is making a huge splash and they're really doing great at raising awareness of their business on on social media so that's someone that started out in 2017 this year and that's noob of the year so new new business of the year the second is the i peed my pants award I, yes, I named these categories myself. Um, I peed my pants award, and this is for the business that is being funny on social media and is using humor and comedy to get their message across and to share their content and to connect with their audience. So I peed my pants award. That's number two. Number three is the eye candy award, and this is for a business that shares visual content and is really great at catching your attention with really great, great visuals. So it might be images, it might be videos, or some kind of cross between the two. So the eye candy award. The third one is hot for teacher. And this is for a business that is really great at teaching their content and sharing information and educating their audience on what it is they're offering and, and giving them some valuable information. So the Hot for Teacher Award. And then the big award, the best overall social media presence of 2017 is called The Cat's Pajamas. And this is for someone who's just killing it at social media. They are nailing their online presence on social media and, and they just, they're the best at it. 
So to nominate someone, head over to my website. Nominations close November 28th at midnight and, and results will be shared on, on December 14th. Yes, December 14th. So nominations are open to all North American businesses but you need to personally know that person. I don't want you just to nominate somebody if you don't know the people inside of the business. So it needs to be somebody you know. Um, preferably, you are also a business owner or you work in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a role in a, in a business. So you are a manager or you have some kind of impact inside of a business. So I want you to be working for a small-ish business, right? Um, feel free to nominate yourself. I, I won't tell anybody. Uh, so if you think you are doing great and that you should be nominated for one of these categories, definitely feel free to nominate yourself. And another condition here is to nominate somebody, you need to like Stratego on Facebook. So head over and do that. And, and then you need to fill out the nomination form and then I will be in contact with the nominees to ask them a few follow-up questions to learn a little bit more about their business. And I, I think that's it. And another thing to note is the, the overall winner, the cat's pajamas, that is going to be partially decided by, by the people. So there will be a Facebook, Facebook voting process happening. So be mentally prepared for that. All right, so go ahead, go go nominate yourself or go nominate your favorite, favorite social media presence business or the ones that are incredibly hilarious or who teach you something or, or the other categories I mentioned. So head over and do there and I'm looking forward to doing this. It's gonna be so exciting to hear from all of you and to check out some new, some new businesses on social media. And it can be any social media site Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'm not picky on that, but just make sure that you, you are ready to share where I can go check them out. All right, so that's it for today. And reminder that I go live every Tuesday at 10 a.m. And you can check out the rest of my videos on my website at stratigro, www.stratigro.ca. All right, see everyone next week. Bye.